Hey everyone, I'm Jess and welcome back to Learning Excel on Mac with Jess. One of the things that I wish I had known earlier in my Excel journey was how important graphs and visualizations are. Not only does the right graph can help you analyze the data more easily, it can actually make the biggest difference when it comes to telling the story. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to walk through three cool graphs that will make your next presentation full of pizzazz. So let's go check them out. So the first one that we'll go over is the overlapping bar chart. So these are useful when you have two different variables that you want to compare. So what we'll do now is apply this to the revenue actual versus target by quarter. Let's highlight our data. And yes, I am right now ignoring that column E percentage actual to target. Hit on insert in the top ribbon, click on the first bar, and the second in the 2D column is the stack column. Let's pick that one. So now you see that the target is the blue and the orange is the actual. Let's click on the blue to work on that one first. Right click, format data series. We're going to put this to the secondary axis so that they behave independently. We're going to choose the gap width to be smaller than the default 150%. We're going to choose about right here. And the reason for that is because I want the target bars to be a bit wider and thicker than the actual. Let's move on to the spilled bucket for colors. I'm going to choose a solid fill. Of course, here in the color, you can pick the color of your desire. For now, I'm sticking with blue. And then on the transparency, I'm going to move it up to about 60-70%. So the reason why I'm doing this is so that I still have kind of the shadow of the target, but I want the actual to pop. Right, And especially if you don't inc um, increase the transparency, what happens to Q2 here when the actual is actually um, lower than the target? You won't be able to see it. So this is why we're doing that. So these are the bar charts and they are useful. But to make it even more useful, let's add labels to them. The label that we're going to add is that actual percentage versus target. So I'm going to move this down a bit so you can see. But before I do that, do you know when you add labels, but they're not placed in a straight uniform line? They're kind of all over the place, up and down, depending on where the bars are. So what I'm going to do now is actually show you how to create those labels so that they are in a one uniform straight line. So what we'll do now is highlight column E, click on insert to add a new column. I'm just going to label this line. And what I'm going to do is use the max function to figure out what is the highest number out of all of these values. Hit Command T to lock the cells and close parentheses. I'm going to drag this down, put it as red so we remember those are not real data points. And again, why I chose max is because I want the labels when I show them later to be on the very top of this entire chart. So what we'll do now is extend our graph to include this line. Click on the graph. You see how this is the highlight. We're going to extend it here. Obviously, we don't want this to be a, a bar. So what we'll do is click on the gray. Go up here to chart design. Click on change chart type. Scatter and scatter the first one. Okay, now you see all the labels are on top. What we'll do now is add the percentages labels. So click on any of the dots, right click, add data labels. Click now on the number, which is the 3.24 now. These are placeholders, by the way. Right click, format data labels. We're going to position the labels above the dots. So right up here. And what we'll do now is uncheck show leader lines click value from cells and here the select data label range is what you want. We're going to choose the 119% all the way to 60% to indicate the real percentage labels that we want to show. Click on OK. Uncheck the Y value so you don't see that 3.2 anymore. And we're almost done. So now we don't want these dots here even though we have the labels so let's click on the dots. Go to the spill bucket for the coloring, click on no line, marker, no fill, and no line. 
Okay, almost there on the cleanup. So we have all the data points that we want here, okay? So let's just, for me, aesthetically, I like to clear out the grid lines. Let's change the chart title to revenue, actual versus target. I'm going to delete the secondary axis because I want them to be all in the millions of dollars. And I'm just gonna delete here the line from the legend. And that is your overlapping bar chart. Next, we are going to look at the waterfall. A waterfall chart is useful to walk your audience through how you get from your starting point to your ending point. Most of us have multiple drivers and variances that contribute to that. So it's a visually appealing way to show the ups and downs on how you get to that ending point. So in a budget example, it could be that your contractor took off for two weeks unexpectedly, or you forgot to renew a license, or that last minute business trip that you had to take. In this revenue example that we're gonna do, we're gonna walk your audience going from the target uh, revenue of two and a half million dollars to your actual of 1.7 million and walking them through the different drivers that contribute to that, such as the price delta, the unit sold, and the customer mix differences. So we are going to select all of the data points, hit insert, and to the very right here, there is one that looks like a waterfall, click on that, and choose the first one, waterfall. So this is technically a waterfall chart, but there is something not quite right. Do you see what it is? The last column here for actual should be 1.7 million, which is where we want to end. However, even though it says 1.7, it's kind of floating to the top and it's reading more like 3.4 million. So what we have to do is now set the actual as a total so that it hits the zero. So let's choose that one. And right here on the format data point, set as total, check mark. And let's do the same for target. Let's clean up our chart. I'm gonna add a title here, revenue, actual versus target walk. You won't need the legend, so we can delete that. And that is your waterfall chart. Next, we are going to look into bubble chart. A bubble chart is useful when you want to add a third dimension to your graph. In the normal graph, you have two axes, x-axis for the first variable and the y-axis for the second variable. But what happens when you want to add a third variable to your graph? Well, this is where the bubble chart comes handy because the size of the bubble indicates the magnitude of that variable. Let's see how that works. In our examples today, we are going to compare the financial performance of three different divisions, healthcare, construction, and microwave. What we're going to do is put the marketing expense on the x-axis, revenue on the y-axis, and the size of the bubble will indicate the profit of each division. So let's do that. Highlight the numbers, click on insert, and on grass here, find the scatter grouping, click on that, and let's choose the 3D bubble. Okay, next we're going to add labels so we know which bubbles are which. Click on any of the bubbles, right click, add data labels, click on the labels themselves, Right click again, and this is very similar to our overlapping bar chart before. Click on Format Data Labels, Value from Cells, we're going to highlight Healthcare, Construction, and Microwave, hit OK. We're going to unselect Y value and the show leader lines. OK, so this is that. And remember, the x-axis is the marketing expense and the revenue is the y-axis. So what does this bubble chart tell us? This tells us that healthcare and construction spends same amount of money in marketing, but obviously construction has a lot more revenue and profit, and the microwave is just very strong, right? Uh, bringing in the biggest profit and revenue for the company, so definitely one to keep. So this is your bubble chart. We're not quite done yet. 
You could stay with the colors here or change them to multiple different colors. But what if I show you a different way to make it more fun? Instead of having these colors, we're going to choose an image. Perhaps each division has a logo that represents them. But for now, I just want to choose the stock images so I can show you what changing a color to a picture is. So we're going to click on Insert, Pictures. And of course, if you already have pictures from your file, but again, I'm going to use stock images. For microwave, let's perhaps think of pizza. I'm going to choose this one, check mark, and click insert. Click on that picture, hit command C on your keyboard to copy. Choose microwave only and make sure that because only microwave has these other small dots. And simply hit command V on your keyboard. Let's repeat the same one. For construction and healthcare, maybe building. Command C, and construction only. Command V, delete the picture, and healthcare, perhaps a heart. Command C, choose healthcare only. Command V. Isn't this fun? Okay, and now you can delete the text labels if you like as the pictures represent the divisions. So let's clean up our chart just a bit more. On the title, let's do financial performance. And at the axes, we're going to click on chart design up top, add chart element, axis title, horizontal and do the same for the vertical. On the axis title and the X, we're going to choose marketing expense. Axis title, we're going to choose the revenue. And as we mentioned, the size of the bubble represents the profit. So those are the three graphs that I hope you'll take to your next analysis and presentation. I would really love to hear from you what other graphs and charts you would like to see. So hit that subscribe button and leave me a comment below. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you soon.